Merry Christmas weekend, YouTubers. Reloading Bench back with you once again. Uh, under the weather, fever just broke, as I said in my last video, but I have no idea when any of these videos are actually going to get published or in what order. Uh, in fact, uh, I have a video about threading that uh, is stacked a few videos back, so uh, I don't know if this will come out after that video uh, or before uh, based on gears. Uh, so my lathe can do like 19 thread cuts. I want to say 10 Imperial and 9 Metric or vice versa, uh, which is cool. Uh, unfortunately, they don't give you all the gears to do all those cuts. And uh, Vivo doesn't even make a kit to give you all the gears that does all those cuts, <laughs> which I think is kind of funny, sad, funny. Um, and there's people who make and cut their own gears, and that won't be me, at least not for a long time. But in any case, um, I wanted to start experimenting with thread cutting. And I need to take it very slow because, you know, other than changing the gears for the thread pitch that, uh, that I need, uh, a lot of people do manual turning of the chuck for thread cutting. And I thought, that's a cool idea because you have total control especially when you're only doing like five or six or seven threads, you know, you're going to get very worried about the machine, you know, getting too aggressive, too close to whatever. So I was watching a guy's video about his new mini lathe and he made a spindle handle. Uh, he made it out of wood and essentially it's this thing. It's, a split piece of metal with a crank that goes into the back of the spindle and then you can crank the spindle by hand very easily to whatever speed you need obviously within reason you know a couple rotations uh, very very slow to cut your threads and you know I found this on little machine I'm like oh I'll buy that that's you know I don't have to make shit the only problem is this particular spindle bore spindle size i think is 0 0.80 millimeter or, or 0 0.80 inches um, based on the compatibility list and looking up the bore spindle size of the machines it's compatible with and i also sent them an email like hey you know my spindle bore is 1.25 inches i don't think this will fit will it and uh you know it being the weekend i don't expect a response back till next week or later because the holiday and, and whatnot coming up so many people if you if you look you know do a search on spindle handle crank there's a lot of people that have made their own their own version of this and I thought that's cool I don't want something made out of wood you know wood uh, wood the pressure you know cranking locking it down uh, I just don't want to make it out of wood uh, but I could very easily make it out of wood, or at least I have the skills and the tools to make it out of wood. Unfortunately, I don't have the skills and the tools completely to make this. I can turn this to whatever sizes these are. Threading internal bore, that's a challenge. And again, since the whole point of doing this crank is to be able to do manual threads, I'm at a catch-22 because I can't make the internal threads with my machine that smallest uh, slowest rotation is 150 uh, power fed rotations per minute so you know I when I bought my lathe I'm you know I one of the things I would look for next time is I want a lathe that goes to zero and can do you know two rotations a minute uh, that's just not what I got so you know buyer beware and these are the things you learn with these cheap you know overseas lathes so but I'll I'll work around that and I would like to do this, but I can't. And the, the reason I can't do this, and this is a blow up of somebody else's, I can't machine that cut, that diagonal cut. So essentially, it's this bolt that's threaded all the way through. And as this um, heads in the chuck direction, it grips the spindle bore. At least that's what I'm assuming. So, you know, it slides in when it's tight, and then as you 
uh, crank on, I think there's a, a nut in here, not this nut. This nut just holds the uh, handle, which it also looks like he machined. Another challenge for me, you know, I've got a vertical slide that maybe I could machine that. So I would have no problem machining the rounds, but that cut, that diagonal, what does that look like? A 30, 45 degree cut, whatever degree cut that is, I don't have the skill, uh, nor do I have the equipment to make that cut. And if I do, you know, it'd be some janky cut on, you know, like a table saw, or excuse me, a uh, radio saw or a grinder with a, uh, a specific wheel. So it wouldn't be straight. It, it would be janky. Uh, I would not get a machine cut. Um, so maybe this is another call to help. Like, hey, does anybody make these for sale? Um, you know, I've seen a whole bunch of people who have made them, but I can't find anybody who sells them other than our friends at Little Machine Shop. So then I got to thinking, self, what if you bought this and then you picked up an inch and a quarter bar stock, whether that's brass or aluminum? I don't know which is harder. I'm going to look that up. Um, and I would, I'm pretty sure that the spindle bore is steel. So either one of these, brass or aluminum, would be uh, kind on the bore. And again, we're talking about spinning the bore at very low rotations per minute. Plus, you know, you're, you're not really doing any, anything high speed that would damage the bore. So that got me to thinking. I'll wait for Little Machine Shop to confirm that this is too small for my one and a quarter inch bore. But what I was thinking was... Since I can machine to a degree uh, brass, I've, I've, uh, I think I've demonstrated that, why not make, again, just like I made the insert for the Dillon slash Mag P, why not make an insert that a one and a quarter insert that a collar that sits here and then put a, you know, a set screw so it, it locks into here. So then it sits inside the one and a quarter inch spindle bore and then do the same thing. Make a, another collar insert with a grub screw that sits on this end that, again, is sized to the bore so that when this moves, uh, I've effectively got something that will be one and a quarter inch. And considering the cost of this, for me to buy all this steel and shit and do this, it's going to be a lot more than $39 plus shipping. So we're probably talking 45 bucks. I think one inch bar stock is like $15, $25. Uh, again, it's not a price thing. It's, you know, ideally I'd love to have uh, one of these that is meant for a bore size of one and a quarter, but I don't think this is... Uh, big enough. I think this is 0.8 inches based on all the compatibility um, lathes that are listed here, which is unfortunate, but you know, hey, it is what it is. But I like the idea. It's clean and simple. And uh, again, if I take the insert collet approach, maybe I can do that because, uh, you know, I, I've demonstrated I'm able to do that with uh, the Dillon and the Mag P insert. So, you know, trimming this down, you know, again, if it's an inch and a quarter already, uh, I don't think there'll be any trimming necessary uh, unless I, you know, slightly smaller uh, here. I don't know. Uh, I'd have, if I pick this up, I'd have to measure uh, this end of the tool versus this end because uh, maybe this is a little bit thinner. And as it comes out, um, the, the movement is what grips the uh, spindle bore. So, uh, again, if anybody knows who can make or rather who sells, or both, make or sell, this tool that would fit a 1.25 inch bore, uh, please hit me up in the comments. Uh, I thought about 3D printing, and I don't want to go down that path because I think this needs to be a little harder. And uh, I've seen some 3D printed versions of this, but uh, I think I'm going to go with a combination of some type of steel and or brass slash aluminum if I decide to uh, to try and machine that myself. So that's the path I'm heading down. But uh, again, if anybody knows anybody uh, who is willing to make and sell a crank, a spindle hand crank for a 1.25 inch spindle bore, 
please hit me up in the comments. Thank you, YouTube, and Merry Christmas.